Welcome to MSME, where we discuss day-to-day living with MS, treatments, nutrition, fitness, and coping skills with fellow MSers from around the globe. Welcome to MSME. Tonight's topic, how one month can change your chronic illness. Tonight's guest is Cami Walker. We are very, very honored to have Cami with us tonight, and she is going to speak how one month truly changed her MS. Welcome, Cami. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, it's, it's such a pleasure to speak with you. I, this is an honor for sure. Now, can you explain for our listeners how um, your MS story came about, how you were impacted by multiple sclerosis? Um, well, when I was diagnosed in 2006, I was in my early 30s and newly married, and uh, I had ha- I'd been having symptoms for years, um, but no one had, like, ever put it together that it was MS, you know? And so in 2006, I had some dramatic symptoms kind of all come on at once where I started having problems walking and my hands stopped working and I lost my vision in my right eye. And so it was, it was very scary and overwhelming. And I did not, um, the, the, when I first got the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, I, I, it was so scary to me because I have an, I have an, an aunt who has primary progressive MS. Yes. And, you know, so I watched her, you know, go from being a, a nurse and, uh, and then now she's, you know, like within 10 years, she was, uh, became the patient in a nursing home. Yes. You know, so it was scary for me. And I ended up feeling depressed and anxious, and I decided, okay, I I need to figure out a different way to move forward, you know? And I called a mentor of mine named Mbali Criazzo, and I was kind of wanting to commiserate and whine but mm-hmm. she didn't let me she was like you know you you Cammy, I really think you need to stop thinking about yourself I was like what how can I not think about myself I'm having so many problems and she's like that's the point you're feeding your problems mm. with with all of your energy and all of your thoughts and I was just like okay well I don't know how not to do that really Mm-hmm. And she she said, "Well, I have a prescription for you." Which she's she often prescribed rituals and things like that. And you know, I was like, "Okay, what what did you th- what would you like me to do?" And she said, "I want you to give away twenty nine gifts in twenty nine days to other people." Mm-hmm. She told me I should journal, um, and she gave me a few specific gifts that she wanted to to give like $7 and a taco to a homeless person. You know, like she gave me, she gave me a few things like that. And then she said she wanted me to give at least one thing that was scarce that, Mm -hmm. that felt like I couldn't live without it. And so I decided after I, I kind of put, I wrote down the, the, the suggestion in my journal Mm -hmm. and I, I really wasn't prepared to, to try, to try it right away. I had to kind of sit with it for a while and I went into the hospital for a few, like seven days. I think I was inpatient. And, um, when I came back out, I still was having problems with, you know, MS symptoms. I also had mental health issues. So mm-hmm. there was part of that going on too. Um, but, oh, I just got lost. That's okay. Yeah, you, you, you went, yeah, you went back into the hospital. So you were trying to oh, kind of right. wrap your mind around what she had given you. Yeah. So I went into the hospital and I actually gave my first gift like a couple days after I got out of the hospital. Okay. And I actually gave a bunch of gifts in the hospital, which I talked about that hospital stay inpatient, mm-hmm. but I wasn't committed to, I will give a gift every day for 29 days. I wasn't really committed to that, you know? Yeah. And, but I decided I'm going to try it because I, I don't think it's going to hurt me. And who knows, maybe it will help, right. you know? <laughs> and so my first gift that I gave was a phone call to my friend Lori, who also lives 
shows with with MS, mm-hmm. and she's got again she's she's more progressive. I'm relapsing and remitting in yeah. general, and um, I I started to write stories. I I started a blog at twenty mm-hmm. nine gifts dot org and started to write a story every day about what I was giving and what I was learning. Mm-hmm. And within three months, I had. Uh, I was getting cold calls from a couple different editors at publishing wow. houses. And, you know, and I've always wanted to publish a book. I've mm-hmm. written, I mean, that's, I've supported myself as a writer from about age 19 on, you know, and, and doing all kinds of different types, you know, everything from marketing and advertising and public relations to mm-hmm. writing. No, I've, I've written a three novels, um, but 29 Gifts actually came, the book came, came together so, it was just, it was, it felt like a blessed path, you know? Yeah. Cause it went from, I went from the, having the idea to starting getting a proposal together. And then by, it really was probably only, like I, I ended up going to a writing conference called Writing for Change in San yes. Francisco, which yeah. they're doing it again September 9th. Oh, that's um, great. If, if people are interested, it's a great conference. And I got invited to that, uh, that event. But in this again was 10 years ago, my friend Britt Bravo, uh, called and said, she's a blogger and, mm-hmm. uh, podcast producer and stuff. But she called and said, Hey, I'm going to be speaking at this conference in San Francisco. Would you like to come? Because I get to bring a guest for free. And I was like, well, sure. Of course I would like to come. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and so I threw together my 10 or 15 pages of my proposal that I had done, which I, I was not that far along at all. And I was taking a book proposal class with a, an author named Jen Sincero. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was helping, or the class was helping me with, with my proposal. Yes. But the, the, my very first um, session at, at that conference was I literally like I let I met my agent in the first wow. session I was in about memoir and then I ended up meeting like the last day they had you could pitch uh they gave you like five minutes to pitch each editor and agent and there was attorneys there there were other types of people there too and so I did that I, I went and I, I pitched it to every single person in the room you know which took time and mm-hmm. I left there with I had an agent, I had an editor that was interested, a couple actually, mm-hmm. but the, the editor who ended up taking the book, uh, buying the book, um, Katie McHugh, she uh, isn't with DeCapo anymore, but mm-hmm. she, at that time, that's we, I was working with her, mm-hmm. and so I really was amazed at how mm-hmm. smoothly the book came together and how little time it actually took because within a year we were the book was oh I was holding a book you know within a year that is amazing so I I ended up like they they assigned me DeCapo assigned me a wonderful publicist Lissa Warren she was so great Mm -hmm. you know and she she planned a big press tour for me right when the book was coming out in Mm -hmm. 2009 and that included a Today Show appearance, an article for Oprah magazine yeah. and website. Uh, Women's World uh, interviewed me, Body and Soul. You know, and I got to do photo shoots. And then those those articles led to people, more people coming to the 29gifts.org site and signing up. Mm-hmm. And, and then people share their stories or, mm-hmm. you know, like pictures or videos about their experience with giving. Yes. And I have been working on a couple different new projects as well. Uh, You're working on a new book, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I actually am working on a couple different books. One mm-hmm. is one is a new book called 29 Life Lessons, Reflections on Living and Giving. Okay. And that book is a, it's a collection of personal essays. Mm-hmm. And it's broken down into sections like spirituality, community, career, family, you know, that kind of love. Like, it's yeah. broken down into different categories of life. And then there's three to four stories in each section. And I write the first story. 
-hmm. And then I, I have submissions coming in for the other two, three, or four that are in the book, the chapters, oh, sorry. Yeah. So that's something I don't, you know, if, if, if someone is interested in write, in making a submission, first you want to sign, I need you to sign up at 29gifts.org. You don't have to read the book. There is an audio book too, but you don't have to read the book, but I think it's helpful. Mm -hmm. And because you can get an idea of my writing style and the types of stories that made it into the first book. And, you know, it, it's been a long project. Mm -hmm. My, I have a co-writer named Angel Stork and we have been working since 2010 on this. Wow. So we're, we, it's really you. been, I mean, the pr proposal's done. Right. It's, it, DePapo didn't exercise their option, so mm -hmm. I, it, it, it didn't sell. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm just sort of, that's another thing that I'm, you know, I'm looking for a new publishing arrangement. Oh, I'm for sure the it'll second, come. For the second book. Yeah, for the yeah. second book. And then I I want to work with DeCapo to do a 10th anniversary edition of 29 Gifts. Oh, where that would like be add, great. A, add, a, add a journal to it, mm -hmm. maybe some perfect gift cards or, you know, um, oh. change the stories in the back, put new stories in the back, and I could write a forward, a new forward or something. Yeah. Because you know, it's, it's inspired so many. It's grown. Uh, let's go back to when you were going through the process at first. Okay. Um, share with uh, the listeners uh, just a few more of the gifts. Now, I know what the MSers who the are gift. listening are probably thinking is that, you know, we don't always have the greatest of means or physical ability oh, <laughs> with yes. our disease. However, Believe these were me, I was feeling gifts. that way yeah. when, when she gave me the suggestion. I was, mm -hmm. you know, my MS was flared in a big way and it was scary yeah um but, but these i needed were, a distraction yeah they and this weren't gave big, me a distraction they weren't big gifts though were they so you know some of them were no. very simple Every, most of them were very small like i told mm -hmm. you a phone call was my first gift mm -hmm. uh my next gift was a, a tip to a street performer mm -hmm. i was living in los angeles at the time um and it was like five dollar tip it wasn't a big yeah. amount of money and i gave some spare change to somebody one day who was obviously having a hard time mm -hmm. on the street, you know? So I just went through my day and looked for opportunities to be of service. Yes. And so it wasn't always that I would buy something to give to somebody or, you know, a lot of time I actually ended up giving a lot of things that I already had mm -hmm. to others. And I, a lot of people use this as a way of kind of decluttering their life, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and with MS, the simpler your life is, the better. At least that's my experience. Like the fact that I don't work full time and anymore at all, mm -hmm. and like I, I kind of broke out of the advertising and marketing world because it was too much stress. Yeah, the stress. And it was causing it. You know, once I knew I had MS, I, I think I only lasted about three weeks in my advertising mm -hmm. job. Like I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. I can't keep stressing my nervous system out over and over every day right. living on living on deadline and I was having to travel because I was managing a, a big account in Seattle yeah uh, I completely... not the whole account but I worked on a on the, on the Microsoft account team yeah. and so you know it was really very upsetting that I decided to, like I did not want to leave my job I loved what I was doing what I did in general I can relate there. I loved my job. And, and like you, I didn't last that long, you know, after, um, my degree, my disease had, you know, progressed to that such a, de, a degree that I had ended up with even a spinal stroke and trying to oh, come wow. back to work on a rollator and slurred speech. And I was working in a very high stress job you know, in the medical field. And I was like, this is not going to work. And I, but I fought and I fought because my son's health insurance was on mine. Mm -hmm. So I thought I have to keep this up for them. They're both special needs. And, but what the, my first follow up with the, um, uh, surgeon, the neurosurgeon, he was like, nope, you are not going back. This is just, wow. yeah, this is not going to happen for you. So that was I think just, a lot of us, I think a lot of yeah. us make, make changes in our career. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I wanted to write books since I was a child, mm -hmm. you know, like I can remember my mom sitting down and talking to me when I was, I seriously was probably about eight. 
Yeah. And and she said, you know, Cammy, I I want you to know that you're gonna you get to do you get to do whatever you you want to do with your mm-hmm. life. She said, when I was get going to, to college and school and trying to decide what I wanted to do with, with my career, um, I, <clears throat> sorry, just a second. It's okay. Uh, I'm having trouble with my speech too. Sometimes it's very frustrating. Oh, I completely understand. Um, I, I, I have word choice issues and slurring issues sometimes as well. So I completely understand. Well, and I lapse, I literally lapse into where I'm just like, I don't even remember what I was saying. Yeah. Get lost. Yeah. Uh, I have it where I get yeah. lost. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but when your mom, sure she was talking where about, was I at with, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, you were talking about, you know, how we sometimes change careers and it's sometimes a oh, blessing, yeah. you know, we get to do what and we were really it, wanted to do. <laughs> well, and yeah, oh, I was telling you about how my mom, yeah. when I was eight, when I, when I was eight years old, my mom sat me down and, you know, she's like, when I was going to school, I could either be a teacher, a mm-hmm. nurse or someone's assistant, you know, mm-hmm. like. A, 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 like an executive assistant or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and she, and you know, she went to, to college. She got her teaching degree. Her and my dad didn't get married until they. Well, she was out of college. I don't know if he was out yet, but he's a pharmacist and a farmer. Mm-hmm. And so my mom gave me this talk about how I got to take what I wanted to do, and then she asked me if there if I know what I want to be when I grow up, and I said I want to write books. Wow. And mm-hmm. she said, well, if you start practicing now, I bet when you're grown up, you will be able to write a book. Mm-hmm. It's so powerful. So, and it's such a blessing yeah. to know early in life what we really want. And even if life takes us around the bend, <laughs> it's great yep. when we can come back to that. And I think mm-hmm. that's what this process brought to you. Now, what impact, while you were going through the 29 days, what impact did that have on your MS and the symptoms it's themselves? Okay. Well, this was astounding to me because, I mean, I went on to disease-modifying therapy. You know, like, it's not that I've ever been without medication and doctors and, you know, the, right. tur- the thing. It's like I just I always want to stress to people that, you know, you really need to, if you're living with MS, you really need a good support system yes. to support your health. And I think that's true of anyone, but definitely people who have chronic conditions. You know, it, it's, I, I and it, but it took me so much time to just unravel my old identity as, oh, I'm a creative director in advertising or whatever, right. you know. And like, all, all of a sudden, I didn't, I couldn't define myself because I did, I hadn't even realized it but my job had defined me for so long that I just you know and then the then my then I let my MS define me and by the two year mark that wasn't working very well yes. and I had to do something different so you know the this project of 29 gifts I believe there has been some magic and some divine intervention behind it because I I just I just don't see how the story and the book could come together without yeah. having that, that yeah. energetic component. So, Good. Uh, uh, And what gift were you at when you actually started feeling like a physical, oh, and, a physical uh, Yeah, difference? sorry. Oh, go ahead. Stuff. Okay, so, yeah. Well, by the 14th day, 14th. I actually realized on day 14, I was mm-hmm. like, where's my cane? I left, I'm like, I can't find my cane. Wow. I was getting ready to go for a walk with a friend and I couldn't find my cane anywhere. And mm-hmm. she was just like, well, maybe you don't need your cane. And I said, well, I need my cane. Believe me, my doctors told me I need to use it, blah, blah, blah. And, and she's like, well, if we can't find it, do you just not want to go? We can order food. And I was like, no, let's just go. And I said, if I need to stop at uh, like Rite Aid or something, I yeah. can. And so we, I decided to try the walk without the cane and I did great. I did fine, you know, and my very first day, even I, I, when I gave my gift to my friend Lori, which was mm-hmm. a, again, a phone call, we had a good conversation and I, I went, I decided I was going to go just get some breakfast at a cafe by our house. Mm-hmm. And yes. so my, my husband, Mark, who we aren't married anymore, but he drove me to this cafe and our diner, I sat down, I ordered my food, and then I just sat and 
was kind of working on ideas and thinking about this project and mm -hmm. I I talked to a guy who was sitting next to me a little bit we just had a very casual ex exchange and he ended up paying for my breakfast that morning like uh, not like he I didn't know until the the server brought my bill over and she's mm -hmm. like oh and by the way this is taken care of by oh, that wow. and I was just like wow and I got a phone call later that day offering me, because I hadn't done any work, you know, you know, like even tried to do any work, really, other than I did blog and write almost yeah. every day. But, you know, I wasn't getting paid right, for those right. things anymore. And, and I think we get into I, that headspace. I think headspace. it's hard for everybody, yeah. you know, to come to terms with what is possible for me, yeah. given the restrictions and you know frustrations that come along <laughs> yes. with with this disease Curve you know balls. and I, I try to I try to respect the disease because right. it is definitely a cunning and baffling thing yes it is yeah, uh, I, I it, don't ever say that this was a cure this was not a cure right. giving is not going to cure your MS but giving will help you cope with it better yes I think it brings a lot of clarity. It it will help you work your way through acceptance and possibilities. Yep. I think that's what it, it brought creates, for me. It creates some new energy. Yeah. You know, where it move, new movement and new energy behind your... Because I tell people, or and Bambali, you know, told me to set an intention every day, mm -hmm. journal every day, don't plan things, go out and just go through your day and look for things that you can do and say and, uh, you know, just, like, it's pretty remarkable how quickly you'll start to notice that there's reciprocity, you know, you start yeah. to receive things and you can shut, you can say no to those things. Right. But what happened to me was, you know, again, my dream started to come true. Like, mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to grieve losing my old, persona for a yes, while yeah. before I was capable of moving forward again you know so I like I said I like to I, I try I do respect the disease because it it can knock you on your butt it really you know? can and once you finally start moving toward you know working your way through the grief you know working your way through okay who am I now Okay, I'm still me, and I have the disease. It's a separate thing. The disease right, is not me. Right, it doesn't define me. Right, it doesn't define me. And then all of a sudden, MS throws another curveball at you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and you, there's always something new. There's and always that's something not true. new. That's, that's not true for everybody. I yeah. do know some people who, you know, were diagnosed in yeah, they therapy. Or, or a lot of people I know who did, they, they don't do um therapy right. but, and the, but they've found other ways like diet and you know I some of the things that have helped me in the past are acupuncture chiropractic massage yes. you know like a therapy mm -hmm. I pretty much always have to have a therapist because yeah. I have a lot of emotional issues that, yeah, and uh, I, think, like I, I also live with PTSD, which oh, is yes, I do too. So very, I understand. very hard to live with. And, it, it really and the is. combination of MS and PTSD is yeah. not fun because my central nervous system is already unstable. Right. So. Right. And, and those triggers can come at any point. It, it can really surprise you sometimes. But, yeah, um, you can be, you can be fun. I mean, that's what happened to me with my vision. I was, I had gone out to, uh, we, we went down to Southern California. I was living in San Francisco, mm -hmm. but I went to some meetings at my employer's, uh, home office in Costa Mesa, yeah. Orange County. And my husband came with me on that trip. And so like, I don't know how many days we were there. I don't remember, but we spent one day at the pool, just kind of relaxing. And when I went inside, that night, I went to put my makeup on to go to this party and realized I couldn't see out of my right eye, you know? Yep. And and I I was just like, okay, this is really weird. It's so blurry. I can't even put on eyeliner. And, you know, I didn't know that heat could trigger symptoms. Like, I, I, 
I didn't know much about MS other than what I'd seen of my aunt and mm-hmm. a few of my mom's friends had MS. So I kind of saw, you know, I did see people as I was growing up. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a total shock, but mm-hmm. still, it, you know, it, it, it was like took the wind out of my sails. Yeah. You know, for, I think for vision quite a does while. that. Yeah. I think vision does that as well. You know, it, it has such an impact. I, I know I was well, thirty-two. My vision came. My my mine came back. My vision came back, That's but it was blessing. it was during this giving process during this month that mm-hmm. I was able to, like, I was doing a lot of meditation and mm-hmm. um, energy healing and things like that, and uh, and those are things that I think help. You know, yoga. I had a. I I always suggest looking up my yoga teacher. His name is Eric Small. Eric Small. Okay. Eric Small, and he actually has a book called Yoga for Emma, Yoga for Multiple Sclerosis. Yes. Um, and he has a DVD that you can get through the Southern California MS Society. Yes. Uh, he is a phenomenal teacher. He has MS. He's in his eighties. He was diagnosed when he was twenty in the mm-hmm. during the fifties, and they didn't have they, the doctor was like, you know. Eric will be in a wheelchair within the next year. Yeah, he's basically like, him. you know, yeah, it's like just yeah. sit down and, and, and wait until wait the disease takes your life away, you know, and, and he was with his grandparents and his mother and his parents with at this neurologist that got, gave him the diagnosis. And as they were leaving, I guess they were, her pet, everybody was upset and his mom was crying and he's like, why are you crying? And they were like, well, you heard that doctor, blah, 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 blah. And he said, he doesn't know anything. I said, that doctor doesn't know me. He doesn't know right. everything. I, I'll figure something out, you know. And he had already been exposed to yoga in college. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't that it, you know, wasn't new to him. But he went, he bought BKS Iyengar's book. Yeah. And started to practice every day from that book. He didn't have a teacher. He didn't go to class. He did this on his own because he, he felt that it would serve him and improve his life. Yeah. And he was right. That's you know, amazing. He, he, I love my he arrived. <laughs> he arrived because he ended up going to India and studying mm-hmm. with Mr. Iyengar. He studied oh, for wow. I think, at least at least five years, maybe more. That's so interesting. And, and, I bet that was fascinating. Yeah. So yoga, meditation, Mm-hmm. artistic expression doesn't yes. have to be writing it I'm also I like to paint and I, mm-hmm. I have like those adult coloring books I have some of those and you know I I just have always been someone that needs to be doing something creative and if I'm not doing something creative it usually is a good isn't it's a good indication that I'm not feeling well right you yeah, know, and I think it's and, all of that, you know, it's just like medically, as much as we need a comprehensive care team going, we also need that in our lives. We need the nutrition, we need the yep. exercise, we need the, the mindfulness, we need the cognitive stimulation, like our artistic expression. We need all of those things, I think, and that's how we can find our balance. That's how uh-huh. we can find our way of just making sure that we are doing what, everything we can do to maximize our abilities and to stave off a lot of the effects of multiple sclerosis. And I think we can, we're, we are our best advocate and we can find whatever works for us. You know, as some people try to fit it in a box. You know, one right. diet or, you know, one type of exercise or, you know, oh, you have to do this type of yoga or that. I think, you know, we really do have, we're individuals and our, our diseases are different. It's the snowflake disease, yep. as they like to say. And we have to find what works for us, you know, and no judgment yep. on whatever works for someone else. You well, know? and the, like you just said, the disease is, it's literally like every single one of us is going to have a slightly different expression, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But there are things we can learn from each other. Yes. And and I I I mean like diet and nutrition has been really important for me, which is something mm. you just brought up. Mm. I try to make sure I eat something green a couple times a day and I eat a lot of fresh fruit and I do eat I do eat cereal and grains, but I, I mostly whole grains. Yeah. And, 
you know, I, I feel better when I'm eating healthy. Yeah, I agree. I do. I fall into eating, like, I tend to want sugar, like chocolate. Yeah, (laughs) chocolate's my weakness. (laughs) Ice cream. I love pizza. I like any, you know, like, like pasta, the Mm -hmm. stuff that, it's stuff that can cause inflammation and can trigger things. And I feel it pretty immediately. Once I've eaten something I shouldn't have, I can kind of almost immediately <laughs> feel like, uh oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, this is not going to yeah. be good. Yeah, it really impacts me quickly. Now, are you still well, gifting? Are you still practicing oh, yeah. the gifting? Oh yeah, I still give, give, and I write on. I write or I manage. Well, I don't. I have a community manager now, but mm-hmm. our new website, twenty nine org. Uh, I I have published some news stories there. So yeah, if I saw that. Look, I saw if you go that. look me up. Yeah, I heard the website for my, everyone. There's a story about the end mm-hmm. of my relationship with my first husband. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a story that's a, it's called You Have to Ride the Waves of Life. It, mm-hmm. it kind of talks about those early days when the book came out and mm-hmm. it, I made the, you know, we made the times list and then the MS Society started calling and saying, can you come here? Can you go there? Can yeah. you come here? Can you go there? And for three years I was on the road. Yeah. You know, it's and that another event. that and speaking at events and you know just helping to further the mission to create a worldwide worldwide revival of the giving spirit. Yeah, and and if uh-huh. you look at her website, everyone, if you go to twenty nine gifts dot org, not only will you see you know her work with her book, and of course you guys can get on there and read and uh, her previous work. So you can, uh, if you are interested in submitting something, you will know kind of her writing style, like she said. Also, um, for those who want to get into the gifting, it will explain everything. It will explain you know the process behind it. You know what it's done for her, and you'll see others on there as well, yep. telling their stories, how it impacted their lives and their MS, or uh, their lives in general. So you will see, you know, how everyone else is going through that process, and and it will help you through your process as well. Mm-hmm. I think it inspires well, a lot. I, I just thought of another thing that I mm-hmm. a physical that happened. You know, like not only did I walk away from my cane and. Mm-hmm not really need it, uh, I, when I, at my one year mark with my diagnosis, after, after I started giving, so it was about three years, there was, there wasn't any progression, which that hasn't been true all along at all, but, but that helped me feel like, okay, maybe I should just recommit and keep, keep doing this, you know? That was your gift of seeing the impact that it could have. Yeah, and like it's not saying that, okay, if we're gifting, if we're getting all this positive energy out there, uh, we're, it's not saying that, okay, this is a cure for progression and you won't have any more lesions. That's not part of the process. But I, I, I know that when we started MSME, we started, um, the groups and all the social media to help everyone and give everyone, everyone a platform and a place for information. We started a page on Facebook and it was called yeah. MS Purpose. And we started it off with basing it right off of your model and we started challenging everyone. And we did it through MS Awareness Month <laughs> for the 30 days uh-huh. and um, 31 days that month, March. And uh, we challenged everyone each day to do something different to impact someone else's life. Uh, whether it was a phone call to uh, someone you hadn't spoke to, spoken to for a while. Um, one day it was a uh, challenge everyone to reach out to someone who couldn't get out themselves, whether you were going over there and asking them if they needed you to go to the store for them or sit and read a book or just chat, whatever it was. You know, we did the little outreaches. My favorite that really got to me um we, um, I challenged myself because at the time I was on a rollator and I have primary progressive active, so I'm more progressed in my mm-hmm. disease as well at this point. And at the time I was having trouble getting up on my rollator and was heading toward the wheelchair. Uh, now I'm a quadriplegic, but at the time I could still ambulate and I challenged myself to do something where I had to get out. I had to get out uh-huh. and give. And it, I went to the local nursing home 
one of the local nursing homes here. And oh, I we, love doing gift sets. Oh, homes. yes. And, and, we, and we, schools and libraries. I, yes. Sometimes I make, I make bookmarks and I take yes. them in. Oh, that's, so. I, that, I love that. And to see their faces. But what we did, we took some, um, personal care products, shampoos and lotions and things that they don't have the luxury of getting there. You know, they get the mm-hmm. basics, but not the good smelly stuff. <laughs> Right. You know, the luxury stuff that you spoil yourself with. And we went around and gave those to the residents who wanted them. And it was amazing. I put a picture on our page that year. It was, you, you get back as much as you're giving, if not more, yep. if not more. And, and I, I think, I think it, it, it really causes, it does, it helps you to create kind of a psychic, like energetic, change yeah you know and it it's fun too like yeah, giving it, it feels really giving feels good and there's a lot of science around the the benefits of giving for mm-hmm. health and mental mental you know mm-hmm. mental health and um yeah. And I, I did see, I, I, I noticed the next year, I saw such benefit from it because that year, um, we had been so impacted by me losing my career financially that mm-hmm. we were just, you know, we couldn't even make ends meet as far as food for the kids and our budget. And I, I mean, I had nothing to give literally at the point. And by the next year, I, I had started taking more proactive steps, you know, with all mm-hmm. that energy. I started making more proactive steps. I learned the. Now, cu- it sounds to me like you should write a story for for twenty nine life lessons. Or- <laughs> um, I would love to. It really has impacted my life. You know, I started couponing, and I yeah. had gotten our food budget down to the point that when a few of the MSers I had met online would say, you know, I'm desperate. I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next month. You know, I don't even have enough food in the house. I would make up care packages from my extra couponing stockpile, you know, of Mm -hmm. foods that they could eat at their stage, you know, an extra blanket because they were cold intolerant or all these little items that fit them. And it would be uh-huh. just chock full of canned foods with the pop top that they could do. And it just chock full right. of these big boxes and mail off to them. And the difference in needing a donation and giving back, uh, it really impacted my life. And I think that's what keeps me going, you know, uh, having a rare type and getting grim prognosis all the time. Uh, it, it keeps me going. It shows me that, I mean, who, when they're severely advanced MS, will be told, oh, yeah, you, you can host a talk show and have a radio network. Sure, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Nobody would think they were that was possible. But or or it you is, can write a New York Times bestseller book. You can write a book. New York Times and, bestseller book, Cammie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's almost like I, things I know, we wanted well, uh, we achieved. My, my, ex- my experience with meeting, because now I, g- I have gotten to travel and meet thousands yeah. of people with MS, is that that it's a, you know, the, for those of us who decide to embrace it as part of our mm-hmm. gift in life, uh, I, uh, it's, it's, again, you know, you said it earlier, where you, you're not your MS. Right. You are a whole perfect, godly person, yes. you know. And you live with a disease. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we learn to live with it. We learn to work around it, (laughs) per se. You know, and those ups and downs are going to come. And, and, you know, and I'll be on that high, and I'll be really moving forward and blessing others. And then the disease goes, oh, I'm still here, you know, and Mm -hmm. knocks me back. And I have to work my way back. Because you have to go lay down for... Yep, you have to. I mean, it it does happen to me where I need to... I'll be in bed sometimes for 24 hours. Right. You know, like asleep. Because Mm -hmm. I I need a lot of sleep. Like, I, that's one thing I've also learned is... I've been kind of sleep deprived lately because I'm, I'm... I've been having a lot of stress about my... With my relationship with yeah. my son and my parents. And, you know, there's just some challenges going on. Right. But... Physically, I'm having some some symptoms that are like a lot of pain, especially. Yeah. You know, and that stress always seems to come out physically. 
with multiple on day sclerosis. 29 though that's my first get my first round of giving on day mm -hmm. 29 i went on a one mile hike wow. actually yeah so it it definitely created some kind of energy new energy mm -hmm. for me that yeah. that really was profound yeah so. and there will be ups and downs and you have to look for the little blessings sometimes that you get from it. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be like, yep. okay, I gave for 29 days. Now back up the truck. I'm going to have a million dollars delivered to my house. No, it is <laughs> not what it is. You have to look for those very small blessings of even a mindset change, an energy uh -huh. change in your life where you get through something you didn't think you could get through. Yep. So it's spotting those small blessings. So I hope everyone, uh, not only if you haven't read her first book, please read her first book, but she will have the second one coming out and go to 29gifts.org. Check out the redesign site. It, you know, look at the stories from other people. They will keep you going and you'll, you'll even think of new ways. You know, and be inspired by them, new ways to give. And it, w it will show you in, in reading how they spotted different blessings coming in their life. It will teach you how to spot those things and keep that po positive mindset and, and inspire you to keep going. Just keep mm -hmm. going and keep doing. Well, and another thing that will inspire you to keep going mm -hmm. is, is, is that you'll start to feel better. Yes. You'll now, do I don't know if that means that your physical symptoms are going to go away like they did mm -hmm. for me, um, but you will feel better and yeah. have a better experience of life in general. Right. So, I, I had my MS specialist ask me, um, you know, because he knows what I'm going through physically and my scans and everything. And um, it just, just one month ago, I was given the prognosis of Grimm. Wow. So I'm in stage... And I've been turned down from a crevus. I told I wasn't strong enough and I was going, I was progressing too fast and I was too far gone, per se, and that my diagnosis was grim. That's the exact words they used at the appointment. Wow. Yeah. And I went home and I, of course, had to process it. It's not like you just immediately go, okay, I can do this. I went through my process. And I said, this isn't going to happen. I have a seven and a nine year old who need me. So this is not going to happen. That's the priority. Yeah. That's my priority. So what am I going to do? I'm See, gonna... and I had to, yeah. I actually had to let my son go, which is so hard. Oh, I had yes. to admit that I had to come to terms with the fact that I really wasn't the best person to raise him, right. you know? And sometimes we're not. And we have to, we have to do that. We have to put them as a priority, even if it hurts us. It's just heart wrenching. Yep, you know, you know it, literally every day I feel my heart tugging, yeah. you know, because I only see my son once a month for yeah, three that's or four. So hard. I, start, I usually stay three nights, you know? Yeah. It's so, it's so hard. Kind of four days. But, and but we take solace in, just like, um, I'm not their primary caregiver at this point until well, I Well, my can... parents, my parents are raised, are, and my parents yeah. and my, my, my second husband who, again, we're not together, mm -hmm. but we do, sh we do have, they, she, he shares custody of Henry. Yeah. Yeah. And my yeah. parents moved in to help, you know, raise my son. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they That's actually nice. gave up their house. You know, they had a great house and, you know, in the city near us and they closed it up and moved over here and started helping. I mean, that's a blessing right there. And, yeah. But it's hard when you start to really become physically, more physically well, disabled when you, to the see more them you need, do it. The more you need from others, yeah. you know, the more help and, and, and support you yeah. need from others, I think is, again, it's different for each person. Right. You know, I, I am just really grateful that I decided to try giving and that I didn't mm -hmm. give up, that mm -hmm. I didn't give up, that I kept giving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure there's days like, cause, you know, and Bali told me I have to start over if I missed a day. And that right, was another reason do. to keep going. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm not someone that likes to do things over if I don't have to. <laughs> right. So, but I did hit a couple points during the giving where I just felt depleted, where I felt like mm. I, like one day all I did was, yeah. you know, send out some, some mantra energy with right. my yoga practice, you know. 
So it is good to get creative and yeah. kind of break break out of the giving box, you know, it where really it is. doesn't have to be something that you can wrap up and put a bow on. Right. Um, and, and that's part of the process, too, realizing uh, things that you might have previously thought didn't have much value. You realize how valuable they are. Yeah. And that teaches you that lesson as well. But, you know, uh, at this point... Uh, I still have to go for some new scans and everything. Um, all the tests are ordered. But my last appointment, because I, I really got to it. I was researching. I was, uh, you know, had people helping me with alternative therapies and everything I could do, making changes in my own uh, plan. And I went to my last appointment, and the MS specialist was shocked, literally shocked. Really? Yeah, his nurse practitioner walked in, and she's like, hey, Eric, I want to come check on you. And she said, wait a minute. This is not the same Eric I saw last time. Uh, I saw your paperwork. I saw his notes. It said grim. Mm-hmm. And she said, after we send you for some new tests, we got to see if your kidneys are still in failure and all that and see if you can do the oh, MRI. She said... But I think you actually may qualify for Aquavis now. She said oh. there's that big of a difference. Wow. And I think that, you know, it's not like we're going to just boom, heal ourselves through this because I did a lot of physical therapy, you know, changing yeah, up. I've done, yeah, I've done yeah. a lot of physical therapy, yeah. which that's another thing that I feel like if you're living with a yeah. disease like MS or yeah. I also am diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Yeah. And so it's, it's just it's so important to take it care really of yourself. Is. And I, I wish that I had been diagnosed earlier on, like, some part of me wishes I had been diagnosed earlier because yeah. there were so many years where I had all this stuff going on that was, you know, all these crazy symptoms that, and just overwhelming fatigue, yeah. you know, oh, to the, yeah, point the, where fatigue. I would, the point where I would end up in the hospital over and over again. Yeah. Um, and I, I still feel tired, you know, I, I get tired just like any normal person. Yeah. And I have to schedule my naps. I honestly have to schedule my sleep and make sure I stick to it or I can't function at the level I need to function at. Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, I'm not functioning at the level I would really prefer to be functioning well, at right now. <laughs> right, yeah. I, honestly, I, I, you know, the progress on this, on 29 Life Lessons has been so slow. Yeah. I mean, we have a ton of great stories already, and mm-hmm. a lot of the content is, you know, we have a good proposal that's, ra- like, ready to ship around to right, right. my agent wants me to improve my enrollment numbers on on the, the website oh uh, we can help with so that on we facebook. will get it out there on facebook we will get it out there on you know the website Twitter. all of our social I media can give you, i can give you all my links here let okay, me go great i have an email that i sent to my oh another cool thing that just mm-hmm. happened this, this week is i got a call from my old i have a writing partner who we worked on a screenplay for 29 oh, okay. gifts and he and i had a quick call this week and he said that there was a, a like we, it's been on hold we, we rewrote the screenplay and rewrote it more mm-hmm. than once when the book was initially optioned when it came out right and then they they never exercised their options so they never actually bought the script it's kind of right. like my other my, my proposal right now <laughs> um you know, and, but he, he said, I've been working on a lot of movies for, or I've been working on some movies for night, like, I think he said Hallmark and Lifetime and, mm-hmm. and there's a woman that's a director who works with these stories that she likes to do true books type stories, you know. I could see that on stories. Hallmark because I'm a Hallmark junkie <laughs> <laughs> and, and Lifetime as well. So I could definitely see this well it would be amazing if that happened it 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 was we put a lot of energy into it for a good year Mm -hmm. year and a half and at that time hollywood was just not interested in a in an inspiring story they were like oh we want to make the craigslist killers right right (laughs) it seems to go in it's like okay and this is the year of the sequels and this is the year of the slasher movies and (laughs) yeah it seems to go that way so where are you at now with this? Uh, your daily gifting, you're kind of going with the ebb and flow of what MS throws at you, and you're also putting that positive energy back into 
the second book, revamping the website for even greater reach. I mean, it's had an amazing impact already. But well, it, unfortunately, I mean, that's another thing that, like, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of loss right, lately yeah. in general. Yeah. And I lost, like, we, I had a site up at 29gifts.org that that's the, the site that I put up under, it's always been at that URL, but, right. uh, I started that right away. I mean, I just, mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. I guess I'd already been blogging for years. I, I had actually started a website called netso.com. Yes. Which it was a support community for people with mental illness, mm-hmm. food disorders, you know, addiction. Right, right. And it was, it was a community site similar to 29gifts.org where, but we had a database of providers and, you know, yeah, great resource. Like it was pe- we had we had uh, everybody had a blog. You know, mm-hmm. was telling stories, and it, I just feel that it if we can connect with another person at least once a day, right. you know, and that doesn't again, you know, maybe like I, one of the things I've done is is I'll pay for someone's coffee yes. who's in line, yeah. you know, or. I paid for a couple people's lunches at mm-hmm. different points along the way. You know, it's sometimes good to give kind of be stealth and be anonymous and yeah. not not even take credit for the gift. Right. I think that's um, the best. And then when it happens to you anonymously, it, you get that same little rush. Like we were in the line at, I think it was Chick-fil-A with the boys and my mom. And uh, we pulled up and she was rolled down the window. She, rolled down the window. Yeah. Uh, we went back to the 70s. Now, she pushed the button <laughs> to roll down the window. And um, when she put the window down, the, the cashier said, oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't need your card. Um, another patron has paid for y- your lunch. And oh, we wow. were just shocked. I mean, we were like, you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Do you, I don't know anything. And uh-huh. um, so my mom thought for a second and she said, okay, uh, how much is the next person's in line? And the cashier told us, so we paid for theirs. So, I mean, it felt like a blessing for a second, but then it felt like an even greater blessing when we passed it back one because that day we had it. You know, uh, yeah. she had gotten her social security check. She had the money. Totally. You know, she wasn't really pressed for financially that day. She could pay for the uh-huh. kids' food. So it was a good day for us. So we wanted well, to share my, the good day. <laughs> even my, oh, that's cool. Even my, um, uh, I just had one of those MS moments again. Oh, I have them. It doesn't phone. matter though. <laughs> I don't think it was anything important. Oh, if it's important, it comes back to us. So that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. We'll get it later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it later. <laughs> you know, but it's just a, such a great process. So I want to share that with as many people as we can. So we're going to be broadcasting this, of course, out to everyone on um, the MSME Radio Network, which is global. Then we will be putting that information on our social media as well, getting them to visit the website, getting them to visit 29gifts.org, explaining, you know, and we have an info hub on Facebook. We'll put it on there, sending it out on Twitter. So we're going to try to spread the news because it's had such an impact in my life as personally as well. So I really want to share this with as many people as we can, because with MS, we really, really sometimes need that positive energy, that hope. You know, that, that we can find ourselves oh, separate of MS. I, I just had that. I just oh, yeah, I had the moment. Of, Go ahead. <laughs> it might have, I might have waited too long. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know. It was something about the website that I kind of oh, had okay. in my head. Yeah, and, but, and I like how you've, you know, you've revamped it, and I, I really am excited about them visiting it, the website and seeing how, you know, the information there will really help them get started, you know, and keep them yeah. connected with your new work as well. Well, even that website was a gift because mm. I actually had a website that was up that there was a problem with, they were sending me my, they sent my bill 
a couple months to the wrong email address. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So I didn't get them. And so I logged in one day to start my blog post and I was like, yeah. where's my website? Oh, great. <laughs> my website was gone. <laughs> it's like all that work. Where is it? Called, I immediately called my friend Adrian Ashley because I, I don't, I mean, she's just someone that I felt like she's a publicist and a speaker and mm-hmm. does all kinds of stuff, author and she does a lot of TV, um, production and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, I called her and I was like, what do I do? I said, they took my site down and, and she said, well, were you paying your bill? I was like, well, I was, but then for the last two months, I didn't realize it didn't get paid. Yeah. And she's like, uh, she, so she called my service provider and wrote emails and tried to get them to figure out a way to put the site back up, but they mm-hmm. actually purged the content. So oh, no, we yeah. we lost about 30 it was a website with like 30,000 members all over oh. the world yeah. and we had at least 50,000 really good stories up there and tons of video and that's heartbreaking you know, yeah photos and everything so that was a big loss to be yeah. like oh my goodness the whole site's gone and now i have to start all over again yeah. you know cuz it wasn't easy to to build that audience up to yeah. that number, having that many followers. And then you know? coming again, trying to build it again without the momentum, you know, of the yep. beginning Without process. the momentum of the book coming right. out and the press, all the press right. that was going on, you That's know. True. But it's, the, a, all, it's, every, it's Everything a that happened, <laughs> every, well, everything that happened yeah. to, for, you know, for 29 gifts for this, for the book to be born. Right. You know, it, like I said, it felt, it did feel like there was just, it was like little blips on a radar screen where mm-hmm. things would lead me, lead me along. It'll lead you somewhere you know? else, you know. And when we yeah. face those new challenges like that, we just have to realize, okay, I might be starting over, but not completely because I have all the lessons learned. And yep. this might lead me to a better place. Who knows? You know, yep. who knows? Separate from our MS. Well, it has been a pleasure talking to you, Cami. I know you have a busy day, so I'll, I'll let you go. But I just want to thank you again for joining us today and doing this interview because I really want to get that information out for them. So thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. I know you have a busy afternoon. And I just want you to know that you're welcome on um, the show anytime. Uh, you're welcome wow. on the network anytime if you want to do your own show because you have so much to give, so much to share with the listeners. So thank you, Cammy. I I haven't ever thought about a, a sh- like my own show, but yeah. I'll have to think about it a little okay. bit. See if All right. It feels yeah. Cool. Any project you want to do, you know, I'm down for it. <laughs> well, I I also would like to get back on TV to do some TV appearances again. Oh, that's know? great. Yeah, that would so, be wonderful. And I do have a press release that I'll send you. Okay. I'll send you the press release and. A headshot and everything, and the press release actually. Oh, perfect. There's some changes in the one that I need to change. I need to make edits to the okay. one that's up on 29 Gifts. All right. So I'll, Just, send, I'll send you one that has the edits done. Perfect. And, um, and like I said, I'll include some links there for you. And okay. If, if there's anything that I've mentioned that I don't give you a link for that you need, just let me know. Absolutely. All right. You have a wonderful afternoon. Everyone, tune in next Sunday. We will be on every Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a wonderful day.